Hello, yogis. Nice to be back with you. My name is Therese. I'm in the third part of our series. Today's balancing. So balancing can be something we can have fun with, especially virtual, because you're in your own home. So take it easy, have fun with it, relax, and do what you need to do to just enjoy the session. Um, I would ask that maybe you have worked out, uh, either taken a walk, gotten into your pool, maybe done a few yoga poses before we begin, because it's a little bit modified. It's not um, a full class, so we kind of have to jump into some of the, the work, and it's nice if your body is warmed up. So with that said, I'm seated and we will begin seated. So if you can cross your legs, cross them. If that doesn't work for you, take whatever shape does and we'll be seated on our bum. And everybody get into a closed eye. So how does that feel when you close your eyes? Let's place our palms down on our thighs. Close your eyes and just inventory your body from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. And for balancing, one of the most important things you can actually focus on is your foundation. So with your foundation, right now in a seated position as I am at this point, I have two sits bones. Then you notice, are they equally grounding? So observe for yourself, equal grounding through sits bones, your tail pushing behind you. If your legs are crossed the way mine are, it's the outer edges of the feet on the mat, the outer ankle bones. And that in itself will give you a feeling of being able to be stable into the earth while you lift your upper body up. So your upper body from the waist up through the crown of your head and your arms all feel lighter and free. So with that in mind, foundation is the key. So as we hold our palms flat on the thighs, bring the body forward, a gentle roll forward, a gentle roll backward. I will probably open my eyes just because I have some words on a piece of paper I would like to give to you. Though, if you can keep your eyes closed and just feel the slow meditative movement back and forth, that would be probably the best place to go. You see more from the inside out. You must close your outer vision. So as you move forward and back, notice your breath. Are you inhaling and exhaling? Are you taking that air in through the nostrils and out through the nostrils? Are you noticing how your body feels from the top of your head to the tip of your toes? Come back up to vertical. Maybe you feel the fan moving around on air blowing onto your skin. Maybe you hear some noises around you. Start to move to side to side and notice the grounding again. You want to notice more. Every part of this practice is about observation. And it's observation without judgment, without criticism, or without expectation. So again, the sits bones ground from right to left. The upper body is free to move. And adding a closed eye can sometimes make you feel a little wobbly. So if that is what's happening to you, if that's not enjoyable, then Open your eyes. Let go of any fear, worry, or doubt you have about balancing and just have fun with this practice. Fear just means that you are having false evidence appearing real. So F-E-A-R stands for false evidence appearing real. 
So let that go. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to fear. Falling out of a yoga pose is actually good. It's success that you've tried it and that you are moving into a new place. So with those arms lifting all the way up to the sky, reach them up, interlace the fingers, pointers release, the outer edges of the palms close at the pinky edge side of your hand, and see about making a movement in a rounded circle. The pointers will be your guide to move this circle all the way around. And notice you're grounded through your lower body, tops of the thighs, excuse me, backs of the thighs, tops of the legs are moving into the ground to hold you in place, the bottoms of the legs, the outer blades of the feet, back into center, we take it the other way. The sits bones kind of rock a little bit from side to side. Just let yourself release. So this is just to feel the groundedness. Each pose we'll take has a foundation. Drop two palms into your heart space. Think about your mantra for your work today. And as you move from the seated position, We'll bring our legs forward, knees will be bent, soles of the feet to the floor, hollow out your navel, round your spine down all the way to the ground. When you get down to the earth, draw two knees up towards your chest, scoop those shoulders under, and maybe both legs can lift high to the sky. Your hands can be placed behind the hamstrings, your hands can be palm up by your side, you can sit on the palms if you feel that that gives you a little bit more support with the arms. And we'll point and flex. So when you are working on feeling grounded, your feet are key. So get the ankles warmed up. We'll warm up through the toes, through the feet, bottoms and tops. And then we'll roll out those ankles. Inhaling and exhaling and we'll move the circle the other way. Find it, enjoy it, notice the pops and the creaks and getting yourself ready for the foundation that we need for the rest of this practice. Two legs will come together and two knees will bend. Hands will come to the backs of the legs at the hamstrings. We bring our chin into our chest, our nose up towards our knees, and we float up. If you have two blocks or two books, I would like you to bring them closer to you. So I'll put my feet down, I'll grab my blocks, bring them closer, and the legs will come back up. Notice what's grounding here. You have your sits bones and your tail grounding, your shoulders pulling down your back so the crown of your head can lift. I've placed two blocks in my hands. Now, when you are working on balancing shapes and movement at the same time, it, it gives another element of work to this. So I'm taking my arms wide and pulling them back in. Wide and back in. Not necessary if this isn't for you. You can always just keep your hands under at those hamstrings. A couple more times. Wide and back in. Blocks are nice because they're not real heavy either. And bring the blocks down. You're done with those for now. Just pull knees into chest. Soften the shoulders down your back and pull your legs down. So knees are to the sky. Wrap around your legs and get tall. Noticing again, sits bones are key. Are they down on the earth so that you can bring the crown of the head to the sky? Head to the right, wake up your neck, back to center, take it left. Inhale, center, chin drops to chest, shake out the tension, the doubt, the worry, let it go. 
We'll swing our legs behind us and find table position. Some of you may want to put a towel under your knees. Always pause the video if you need to get props ready. When we come onto hands and knees to table position, it's a major key position in yoga and getting it just right will help. When your foundation is strong, your pose is strong. So palms are flat, there's no cupping under the palm. All the fingers lay splayed out wide and you stack from your wrist, your elbow and shoulder, one beautiful long straight line, you do it on both sides. When you find that and you find the hip and the knee in the other straight line, vertical, you'll notice that you've got a very solid foundation. This will allow you to do a lot of things because you feel good through your body. Let's take that right leg back, curl the toes underneath you, and push the heel away. You want to stretch the bottom of your foot so the right hip is pulling toward your head, the right heel is pushing away toward the wall behind you, navel is in. Take it to the inner blade of the foot, take it to the outer blade of the foot. So you've got this movement of side to side. Notice the hip is starting to get involved here into the rotational aspect. We want to be able to move through the hips for our standing balancing poses. All righty, so we come back onto those toes and we'll lift the leg up. That position turns into a bent knee. And I'm actually going to turn around. I started with the right. So we'll bring that knee up into a bend. You've got your hips level. You've got your foot pushing to the sky. Drop, take it out to the side. Drop it down to that left leg. Lift it back up. So notice the movement I'm getting. I'm oiling up my hip by just dropping and touching and lifting back up. Last couple. Next time the knee is out wide to the side, swing it back around you with that bent knee, level out the hips, and pump the sole of the foot to the sky. Getting into the glutes. Breathe here. In breath and out breath. Ah, letting tension go. And then that right knee is going to come back down. Come down onto your forearms just a minute and swing those hips around to release the wrists. Take your pressure off of those wrists. Reverse that movement. Big sweeping circles. Bring yourself back up onto your foundation, making a, a table with arms and legs. And we've got side two. So your left leg is going to stretch out long. Your toes are coming behind you. Reach them back. Kick through that left heel as you pull the left hip towards you. This is opposition of movement. You have equal and opposite. That creates that reaction of being stable. Good. Go to the outer blade. Go to the inner blade. Outer blade. Inner blade. Opening up into the hip. And then we come back to pressing the toes into the ground and heel away. Lift the leg up. Bend into that knee. Sole of the foot is to the sky. We swing the leg out 90 degrees. We try to keep the hip and the knee at the same height. Then we lower to touch. We lift it back up to that hip high height if it'll go up and down. Up and down. Inhaling and exhaling. Finding that motion. 
finding that strength, keeping that engagement. And it's all through that foundational movement that we've, we can do because we are solid. We bring it back up behind us and we pump the sole of the foot. Squeeze into that glute. Notice that you can do the work more freely with your body when you feel solid, when you feel grounded. In breath, out breath. And then lengthen the leg back out. Pull it back down. Some of you may want to use blocks for this next one. I'm going to sit on my heels. So I don't need blocks to sit with my toes curled under and my bum on my heels. Some of you may want to grab your two blocks place them right between the thighs to be able to make that same seated position. So your choice on that, it'll give more intensity without the blocks. It may not be accessible though without the blocks. I want the soles of your feet to stretch. I want your toes to get activated. And in the meantime, while we're doing this, we're gonna keep our mind off of it by opening up those wrists that we just used. So hands in prayer, pages of a book open, backs of hands touch, fingers come towards your body, drop down towards the floor, press away, and they come back in. Again, we open pages of a book, backs of hands, fingers towards your body, down towards the floor, press away, come back in. We've got one more. Open. Backs of hands, elbows wide, fingers pressing towards you to the floor, away and back in. Notice how that really released the wrists nicely. Shoulders are back. One more thing while we're stretching our feet, we'll lift our arms all the way up. We'll take our arms out wide, wrap the right one under the left for your eagle wrap or drop those fingers behind you and give a bear hug. Your choice. Take the elbows high, turn the head right, center, exhale left, center, chin to chest, center. Open it back up. Are your feet really screaming at you yet? They're almost done. Open them up wide. We'll take left arm under, sweep it under. Do your wrap or your bear hug as you drop elbow tips down. Elbow tips lift. Take your head right, center, left. Inhale, center, chin to chest, and center. Open up two arms high to the sky. Finish up so beautifully. The practice is yours, hands to heart. Place those palms down and let those legs go feet flat and tap, 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 tap. You can sit some weight back and come onto forearms as that's better for you. It's all about finding just the right amount of effort and just the right amount of work. So you want to find the effort and the release. All righty. We're going to bring ourselves back into um, table, hands and knees. One more time in table. So palms flat, fingers wide, because this is a big balancing pose here. As you take your foundation, the hips over the knees, and we take that right leg behind us, hold it up by engaging that right heel into a press away from you and toes pulling towards shin. Then you can take that left arm maybe off the floor and notice the work you have here. You've got the thumb up, the shoulder in the shoulder socket, you're looking toward the mat. And if you want, you can put that hand back down. Otherwise, everyone pull everything in and stretch it out. So a lot of people think balancing shapes are just the ones that were standing doing tree pose or warrior three. 
but that's not true. Balancing is in every single shape. So we're now balanced on our palm is flat, fingers wide, our left knee is down, the left shin is down, the top of that left foot, all the toes, the tops of the toes are pushing into the ground. Good, we'll stretch it back out, left hand down, right knee down, and we'll take side two. So we'll bring that left leg out behind, look back there, see if you've got a nice long straight line, toes are pulled towards shin, heel is pushing away, hips are level, and we take the right arm out in front. Remember, you don't need to use the right arm. If you would rather, you can place that palm back to the ground. Pull in, squeeze, and reach. You exhale as you round it. You inhale as you expand it. So if you follow breath with that movement, your body finds much more harmony and harmony will help you find that balance. Breathe in, breathe out. Last couple. And then stretch it out long, reach, kick through the heel. Good core work right here too, just so you know, you don't have to do sit-ups to do core. This is huge core work. Breathe in, breathe out, hand down, knee down. Put your blocks back up to the front of your mat. And if you're gonna use them to find your forward fold, you can use them. Right leg forward, curl toes under on left, left leg forward. So we begin with a bend and a straighten of each knee. We begin by dropping our chin to our chest and our head down towards the mat. If you're using blocks, you can use them at any height that you want. Shake out your head, let it go. And use the blocks if you'd like, if your fingertips don't touch the ground. I'd like to have you roll to the tippy toes, roll to the heels. So you have to have your fingers pressing into something to have stability. Roll to the tippy toes, roll to the heels and lift the tippy toes. Keep your head down, keep looking down through your legs, breathing in and out. And from that feeling of movement through the feet, we're gonna roll all the way up into a Tadasana. So softly roll, 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 chin is in chest. Shoulders are rounded till the heart lifts then the shoulders come back, the head lifts up. And we've got our body in a vertical now. We're balancing through a vertical position. I'm gonna move my mat just a little bit here. We're nice and tall. Again, I'd like to see you roll from the toes to the heels now and balancing in a vertical position. You can use your arms to just kind of sway back and forth. You begin to feel more through your feet. And when you feel more, then you're feeling grounded. You always want to know what the ground feels like underneath you. Back into center. We'll come to the front of the mat and just find your Tadasana at the center of your mat in the front. Palms turned down. And notice if you can lift all 10 toes off the mat and still stay very balanced. It's done by using the balls of the feet and two points in the heels. And when you press into that area of your foot, you can softly drop your toes because your quads are lifting up energy. They're fired up, they're pulling energy through your pelvic bowl, up through your abdominals, and your shoulders can relax, your gaze is forward, your breath is flowing. So take arms out wide to the sides, 
and we'll bring our right toes behind and touch the heel as we touch our nose with our left fingertip. So we're moving backwards. We're using opposite toe to touch the heel of the arm that's touching the nose. Then when I go forward, I touch the nose and I do the heel to the toe, heel to toe. So this is balancing pose as well. Notice that we have to stay on the tightrope. One more time backwards. Eyes are key. Gaze, your dristy, your focus. It's always at a point that's not moving. You stay relaxed in the shoulders. We breathe in, we breathe out, and we just find the peace in the shape we're doing. Take two arms, lift them all the way up. Take your hands to your low back, elbows in. Take a little back bend, open up the chest. Press the hips down, engage through the core, lift back up. We'll dive it down. As you dive down, you bend into the knees, you shake out your head, shake out your legs. Take your half lift. How are you doing about keeping nice to yourself? We've done some balancing already. Be nice, be kind. We always are here to just do the work. Let everything else go. Fold it back down and we're gonna roll back up again. So again, the knees bend, the shoulders round, the chins in the chest. When the shoulders have pulled back because the heart has lifted, the crown of the head lifts up last. This next exercise, I'm gonna face you so you can see me do it better. And again, vertical. So can you lift all 10 toes and still be balanced? Your thighs are fired up. You let those toes softly move back down. Eyes gaze forward. I come onto the tips of my, my right toes, excuse me. My hands are free. We take that right knee up, maybe the left arm up and we look to that left arm. We bring our gaze back forward, everything lowers at the same time. Up on the left toes. Do it in steps if you need to and just lift that left knee first. Maybe the next time you reach the arm up on the right. It's opposites. You take a look towards your right arm if you're moving on. Center it up and come back down. The slower you work, the harder sometimes things are. So remember it's opposites. I've got my right leg, left arm, I'm lifting. I turn, I turn back. Eyes are key, keep it slow. Do not jolt the head quickly because you will fall. We draw that knee on the left up as we reach the right arm up. It's like you're standing on a stair, pushing your heel down so that your body feels like you've got support underneath it. Again, we'll go right leg, left arm, and this will be our last one all the way up. Head turning if you haven't done that yet. Maybe you try it. And you can always add on and actually make this more intense by closing your eyes. I haven't gotten to that point yet. This is plenty for me. Turning your head and back center. Bring your hands to your hips and just let it go. Swivel it out. We create some tension as we're trying to hold our body tight and be engaged. Reverse the, the swivel. And then you come back through center. I'm just gonna take a quick peek down here to see what I wanted to do next up here. And I think we're moving along pretty well. Okay, this one, is tree pose. So interestingly enough, with tree pose, we'll take our body nice and tall. We come up onto the right toes. Notice the shift of your weight into that left side. So Vriksasana, tree pose, you can start at your ankle. And I usually suggest people start at their ankle just to get acclimated and slide up to your calf muscle. Or you can pick your 
ankle up and pull your leg all the way up to that inner thigh. Do not put your foot across the knee because the knee is a hinge and if you press it out, it's not going to be happy. Can two arms lift high? Can two arms lift into chest? Take inhale and exhale here. And then maybe you bring your tree up into the full branches. And your tree can sway. The trees are swaying a lot in the breezes these days with the monsoon. So you, your tree can sway. If you fall out of it, you just start again. But be very mindful to take it slow and easy. Press it down. Lift it up. Maybe press it down. These are just add-ons. You don't have to do these. And next time you press down, turn the thumbs up and come in and press away. Because you know what's interesting? You, you have to use more core and coordination and concentration when you add movement and hands into heart. Float that knee forward. We'll finish up the shape as beautifully as you did it. And that foot comes down. Bend and straighten. Kind of wiggle it out a little bit. Maybe stretch the right palm up. Excuse me, right palm down, left palm up. Lengthen and lean. Come back up center. Press the left down, right up. Crack at the wrist there. Press up and down and lean. Draw navel in, shoulder back on the right. And come back up. All right, we're ready for tree side two. So kind of roll it through the feet a little bit to kind of feel your, your body on the earth. And start at heart. Come on to those toes of the left foot. Bring that heel in, working the knee outward. Sliding the foot maybe up that calf muscle. Maybe we reach down and we grab a hold of that foot and we put it to the inner thigh. Find your dristi as your gaze. Find your breath. Find your length. The more that you can be bone stacked, the better balance you will have. Hands are going to lift up towards the sky. We find that wiggling tree. It's okay. Breathe in, breathe out. Feel free to hold here and just work on grounding and suction cupping that right foot into the ground. Maybe you're going down and up. Pressing energy down and up. Last one down. Thumbs come in. Up, excuse me. Hands come in. Press the thumbs down. Take it out. Whoa-oh, I'm losing my tree. Hang on, I'll come in back. Bring, in, bring your breath in and out. You press out, you press in. Press out, press in. Hands into heart. Float that leg forward. My tree was quite wobbly on side two. And foot comes down. Hands come to hips. Just give a little movement all the way around, scraping that peanut butter jar clean with your spatula. And put it on the last cracker. Let's go the other way. Just a little thought about how big a sweep you want to make because you want to get all that peanut butter. And come back through center. Two arms lift high. Take a little back bend, open it up. Inhale to lift, exhale to dive it down. Take a half lift, stretch it out. Exhale to fold. Alrighty, I'm going to go back through the center here so you can see me. I'm in a forward fold, Uttanasana. Bringing my body to the center of the mat, I sweep Two arms up into chair. Notice my feet. They're close together. Arms are up into chair. So moving while we balance. You're going to stand tall. Bring hands to heart. Find that tree shape. I would suggest either ankle or calf on this. I don't think I'd go all the way up to the thigh. The knee is going to come up center. Take it wide to the side. Sit back. Reach your arms back. Push your hips back. Lift back up into chair with wide legs. Bring hands up into heart. 
excuse me, hands together and hands to heart as your knee comes back up. Bring it back down to meet that left leg. We'll sweep down into chair, reach back, lift up your in chair shape. Stand tall, palms touch. You go to the ankle or to the calf muscle for tree. You pull that knee into the body, hands to heart. Sit down, wide leg, sweep back. Lift back up to chair, wide legs. Stand tall, palms together. Pull the knee back in, hands to heart, foot down. Inhale, sweep down and back, reach up to chair. Third one, this is it. We come tall, palms together, knee out to the side for our tree. Bring your body into a nice, soft hands to heart, knee forward, set it down, equal feet, sit back, sweep back. Lift up to chair, bring two palms, body up, two palms together, and float the knee back in, and hands to heart. All right, we have side two. So, weight is going to go into the right here now. We start with the chair. We reach up, sweep down and back, lift up to chair. Stand tall, palms together. Hands drop to heart, weight is in the right. Light on the left, you're in the ankle area or that inner calf muscle. Knee comes back up front. We'll take that leg down, wide and arms up. Sweep back, bring it on up. Back up into Loaded leg, knee down, hands to heart. Back behind you, reach to chair. Tall, straight legs, palms together, hands to heart. Foot turns to ankle or calf. Breathe in, breathe out. Bring it back up center. Take it wide to the side, all the way down, sweep back, arms up into a wide chair, back up through center, hands to heart, knee down. Last one, let's take it back, sweep back, reach up, final chair shape, bring it up tall, palms together, hands to heart, knee wide to the side. Place it where you'd like. Bring knee forward. Set it down. Sweep back. Hips back. Lift up last wide-legged chair. Pull it all together. Bring your knee up, hands to heart, and lower it down. So again, movement is tough. When you're balancing, let's take a little swivel of the hips, let it go. Breath is coming in, breath is exiting. All righty, one last look down here as we finish up our practice. Good, all righty. Okay, inhale, lift up, reach up high. Exhale, take a saguaro arm back bend. Inhale to vertical. Exhale to dive it low. Bring your block in front of you here for this one. On the right side, you can use your block at any height that works well for you. Place it to about a two o'clock position if you're using the block. Use your fingers on the block on the right. Put your hand on your left hip. Kick your left leg all the way up and back behind you. 
and then turn the toes outward. Your foot is flexed hard. Your standing leg is fully engaged. Your lifted leg is fully engaged. You stack the hips. You start to turn more through the spine. And then maybe the arm lifts up off of the hip and you find that Ardha Chandrasana, that beautiful half moon shape. Keep your breath moving, keep it flowing. And as you work your body back down to the floor, find a forward fold. Bend and straighten each knee, shake your head out. Change your block to be side two if you're using it. It's on the left side at about a 10 o'clock position. Take a half lift and stretch out your spine. Let go of that fear, that false evidence appearing real. Exhale and fold. We have nothing to fear. We're just doing a yoga shape. Left hand stays on the mat. Right hand comes to your hip. Put the weight into that left foundational foot. Light on the hand on the left as you kick that right leg back. It's a big engagement of a flex of the foot. You begin to stack those hips, open up, crown of the head forward, round those ribs open. Your back leg is straight behind you and it's flexed. It can be higher than your hip. That's perfectly fine. When you're ready, maybe arm up, maybe you look up towards the sky. You reach, you lengthen, you open up. Last breath here. Take a look with the eyes first. And we move the arm down second. We find a forward fold. Let your body release. Take a half lift. One more. We'll do bring your two blocks forward. This will be a modified warrior three. So fingers on any height of the blocks. Extend your spine long, crown of the head forward, tail way back. Start to move your right leg behind you and lengthen out. Heel up, toes down, hips are level for a warrior three. And if you feel that you've got enough stability to lift your hands, take them off the blocks, oops, or leave them on the blocks. I find this way a tougher way to get into warrior three, starting from lower. So I'm gonna keep my hands on the blocks here and I'll show you one other way, the other way that I like better. Foot comes down, forward fold. Take a half lift, put those fingers on the blocks, left leg lifts. So you've got that warrior three hips level, heel pushing back. Maybe you lift those palms, focus your eyes. Hands come back down if they were up and foot comes down. Breathe. And roll it all the way up. And hands to heart. Last way for warrior three. This is the way I like to do it better. I step right leg back, a small step. I work onto those back toes and I'm totally engaged all through my body here. So I can lift that back leg up, up, up. My upper body will start to bend itself. I don't have to bend it. It bends itself with that strong kick of the foot behind, lifting that leg, breathing in, breathing out, keeping level hips. Hold as long as you'd like and then you come back down. And we take left leg behind. And again, like I said, for me, this is easier for me to get into the shape when I can feel that full engagement, that foundation that I was talking about. You're up on those left toes. You start to kick the foot into the sky. You start to lengthen out of that heel, pushing away. You slowly, your body will start to move into that, that forward position. You don't have to fold forward. Your body will do it by just lifting the leg in the kick. Find the breath. 
hold it as long as you'd like and softly bring it back down. Good. Two arms high. Let's end this here. We'll take a nice back bend to release. Inhale to lift. Exhale to fold. Beautiful job. These poses are not easy. Take a half lift. Exhale, fold. Bring your body back to a seated position on your mat. Breathe in, breathe out here. Get long legs. Kick through the heels, pull the toes towards you, hands come to heart. We round down, hollowing out the navel, shoulders round, chin to chest, and roll all the way back. Once we roll back, we find that we are long, we are grounded, we are free. Right knee comes into the body. Hike your hips over to the right side of the mat. Hike your body over there. Pull that right knee in towards the armpit. Then move that right leg to the left as you open up your right arm. Stretch out. Open up. Breathe. Curl that shoulder underneath you. Notice where your foundation is here. It's your whole left side. You want to be on that hip, outer blade of the foot of the left leg, your left shoulder, the, the head. Come back through center. Draw that right knee into chest. Gets a hug. It gets a squeeze, and it lengthens out. And you go to the other side of the mat, moving to the left, so that as you pull that left knee in and give it a squeeze and hug up towards your armpit, you then can release that left arm out wide. Right hand moves across the outer aspect of the leg to roll to the side. Bringing left leg to the right, looking over left shoulder. Quieting your gaze with closed eyes. And noticing that the false evidence that appeared real can just disappear. It can melt away. As long as you find a foundation and you find grounding. And there's no grounding in false evidence. Draw that left knee back in towards the chest. Pull it toward the armpit. Two knees up. Rock it a little bit side to side as you wrap those arms around the legs, reaching around to the elbow tips. And then work your way into your Shavasana, which is long legs. Reach them long to the edges of the mat. Center yourself in the middle of the mat and turn the palms up. Scoop the shoulders under. Close your eyes. Let your body just breathe in this wonderful practice that you just did. And remember, it's all about just the right amount of effort just the right amount of surrender. Falling out of a yoga pose is not a failure. Do not ever think that anything you do on or off the mat is a failure. It is all a lesson, and it teaches you what did I do well and what do I need to improve on to make my body do something correctly or make whatever I was working on happen. It's about just finding peace in that feeling. So as you lie here in your Shavasana, just remember to bring all the elements together to harmonize your body. You need to harmonize both on and off the mat. We practice on the mat so that we do a better job off the mat with harmony. You involve your torso. You use your concentration. You clear your mind of clutter. You use intentional breath work. You stack your bones into a good alignment. Your limbs are always engaged. There is, there is this 
ability to hold the leg up when you engage it, hold the arm up when you engage it. We use our sitz bones and we notice them from right to left. We use our tail, our tail is our navigator. It's our big, big spinal mover. You use one or two feet. You use legs, arms, hands, and sometimes even your head will be your foundation, right? If you're in a headstand. And this grounding process is used to create the steadiness and the ease that you need in every single thing you do in your life. Above all, you want to bring synchronicity to your mind, your body, and your spirit, bringing them together as one. And as you start to wiggle fingers and toes, ankles and wrists, the jaw wriggles out, the head turns side to side, and then you move to one arm, stretch it long behind you, find a pillow for your head on that arm, and find fetal position two knees bent and stacked. Use your top arm, press yourself up to a comfortable seat. We began in this seat. How does it feel now? How long do you feel in your spine and the crown of the head lifting to the sky? Do you feel the lightness in the upper body and the grounded feeling through the lower body? Remember, it's a practice. Remember to keep showing up. Please show up one breath at a time and enjoy the feeling of the instability when you work with balancing poses. It will allow you to grow. It will allow you to come out of your comfort zone so you can grow. We'll take a deep breath in and end this wonderful practice together as one harmonious group together. In breath. I bow to each and every one of you. Know that you are your best teacher. Utilize your integrity. Utilize your concentration. Utilize the trust you have in yourself to enjoy working with imbalance. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. Namaste.